Entry 1. A New Start. A clean page for a most important story. Hanu 2 is arrow-breaking around Jupiter. The Lord of Planets thunders his greeting to me. As I record this, I am blasting Ayavanti 3's Siegfried in the Stormwall over the radio howl of the Jovian magnetosphere. It galvanizes me. I am with the gods. Author's Note. Ask Ayavanti's trainers how they settled on the one, two, three suffixes. Numbers are perfectly defined, therefore inhuman. Is this suffix meant to mark the Ayavanti AI as non-human? Objective. Construct long-term scientific outpost for study of indigenous European life. Resources. Eight prefab starter habitats. 600 shielded heavy work frames and this NU and B-RA slash MA Cyto machines with backup replication chambers aboard Hanu The best hazardous environment engineers money can't buy Smile support for extended duration Two of Elizabeth's Eon type platforms for radar, LIDAR and deep ice mapping Hazards Lethal radiation environment Heavy ion bombardment for Jovian magnetosphere Unshielded crew half-life is 24 hours. The most expensive lie in human history. I'm not here for a safari. All of Europa's life will soon be known, mapped, and exhausted of wonder, bound by the tedious constraints of physics and biology. I knew these things too well. They are already killing me. The K-1 artifact promised me an offering, a gateway to the secret of immortality. I call it clarity. It is waiting on Europa. I am still dying, but not fast enough to kill me. Corporeal status. Body at 35.9 C. Bull. Pulse. 25 BPM. Strength. Good. BP. 75 over 90. Rest. 6 breaths per minute. Pulse. Ox. 210%. Today's blood mix is perfluorocarbon with stem slurry. Avoid hyperfocus with alpha wave brainwash for 10 minutes per hour. New kidneys are growing in Whitford, the deli pig, for next transplants. Must find a good pork recipe so Whitford will not go to waste. Medical team insists I accept cytomachine injections. No, nothing enters my body that does not share my genetic self-interest. Instead, I will grow an upgraded monocyte strain. Elizabeth's birthday approaches. A good gift would be an olive branch. Never let her say that I do not try. Hannu, please identify a gift that could only come from my own intimate and personal knowledge of my granddaughter. Gift suggestions. Antique weapon or twin eagle replica. Professional pilot trained on Eon series ship. Bespoke AI writer of personalized novels. Fruit basket. Titan farmed. Humanitarian investment. Minefield clearance. Long-term reparations. Anti-traumatic medicine. These are pathetic, Hanu. Revised gift suggestions. Research endowment. Medical prion diseases in persons with immune resistance to recombinant gene therapy. Research endowment. Medical. Sporadic fatal insomnia. Research endowment. Psychological. Loss of father. Family trauma. Research endowment. Psychological. Reconstruction of trust after loss. Personal apology. Unpracticed. Death of patient in physician's care. Statement of grief. Unpracticed. Death of son. Never mind, Hanu. Buy a few dog hives for a soil reclamation project somewhere. Honeybees, whatever strain is best, and big friendly Newfoundlands for the hives. Everyone loves dog hives. Subject, Exomine blocked, redacted. Contact, Ikov for their trick, failed. Redacted, hire Dwayne McNiad away from Ikov, failed. Raid Ikov for Vex data, in planning. Europa, clarity, in progress. Be a good man and a good grandfather in progress. Become Luca of future human thought in progress. Note, 
Barrow Trauma. If we land too hard on Europa, we will plunge into the ocean below the ice and die of Barrow Trauma. Death by pressure. The only light down there comes from magma and phosphorescent bait. The sea is ten times deeper than Earth's. Even in Europa's weak gravity, peak pressure at the sea floor is 200 atmospheres, worse than Venus before the traveler. One imagines Pi contracting under that kind of pressure, crushing the perfect circle closed. I wonder what lives down there. What slow confusions of mass and form curl around the smoking vents? What threads of pale flesh slither across dark miles like nerves in some vast cold brain? Did the traveler bypass Europa and Titan and Enceladus out of respect for their native life? Or was it afraid to touch the things pulsating below the ice? Entry 2. Update. Echo. Hanu. Quartz. Site X. Mistletoe. On Europa, we lurk like summer vampires in the casket of our smile pods. Our frames labor on the ice, building a cathedral to the sciences. Radiation is very bad outside. Even my assistant has taken ion damage out there. Pleased to see him healing flawlessly, vacant and empty as he is. Author's note. What if this perfect self-repair is the reason the exos degrade? I sulk in isolation as the crew works. My pride is wounded. Did I expect Clarity to come out and greet me? Hail to Clovis Bray, first among men. Yes, absolutely I did. The lunar artifact promised me a solution to the indifference of the cosmos. It told me I was unlike all others. And damn false modesty. Damn vanity. I am different. Not for my present qualities, but for my future influence. I shine with the noon's light, reflected back through time to this age of dawn. Author's note. Perhaps the mind heals itself stiff, and this causes the billboarding, the stereotyped behavior, the final crash. I am going to be the Luca of all interstellar human civilization. It is a mistake to imagine that the greatest man, the god emperor of history, and ruler of circumstances whose influence reaches out to the end of time will live in the future, in the full flowering of human glory. That man lives now, at the tiny bottleneck before the vast explosion, when it is still possible for an individual's decisions to touch the entire species and set the course of all future choice. Author's note, self-maintenance so absolute that it becomes a static loop? Investigate. I said all this in my book, but my son's book still sells better. I suppose because Clovis Points is a much more approachable title than Competitive Immortality Through Primogenitor of Future History, Ontogeny, Rephylogeny, PFHOR. My son's work appeals to those intellectual infants in the retro nationals and to the parasites on common compassion support. Obviously, they prefer the softened, pre-chewed version of the truth. And there is also that bump of public sympathy for a dead man. Yet, I cannot deny that, in simplifying my legacy, my son has improved its reach. He was the one to formulate the famous two-sentence summary of PFHOR. Most of our energy should be spent in support of the things that are most like us. This is the only true responsibility of any living thing. And the slightly less famous addendum, the best way to spend energy is on things that make more things like us. Children are viral replicators of our ideas, but there is a certain terror about them. They alter our legacy, mutate it. As Clovis II modified competitive immortality through PFHOR into Clovis points, what if my children decide on some key amendment, some ineffable change, which makes my legacy no longer mine. How can I be reborn through the eternal recurrence of my life logic if what my children pass down is the logic of some other Clovis, some flawed copy, just as Clovis too was a flawed image of me, a flaw that I created in my clumsy eagerness to make him flawless. My second boldest decision during my son's development was to replace Clovis II's mitochondrial DNA 
normally inherited from the mother, with my own. I had to know that I was in his cellular engines, powering his existence. It was not that change which killed him, but it is the fear of being replaced by a faulty duplicate that will kill me if I put off my brain upload that much longer. I have a library of scanned volunteers aboard Hanu, but my own consciousness is not among them. A Moravec upload is slow and inadequate. What if there are quantum informatic elements to the mind not captured by such crude mechanical means? No, I insist on that perfect terminal quantum snapshot for reasons of fidelity. The only perfect and lossless brain scan is also a destructive one, a fatal one. Author's note, Clovis too died in one after all. I made the vessel to receive him, but I lacked the alkahest, the solvent to render it pure. I must finish the exo-body work to become the Luca, the one true divinity of man. To do that, I need clarity. And clarity is here. All the signs point to it. Author's note, if I succeed, no forgiveness for those tight-fisted Ishtar fools. I know they are working prototypes. They could have shared. Corporeal status, body at 35.5 C, pulse 30 beats per minute, strength modest, blood pressure 90 over 60, respiration 6 breaths per minute, pulse ox 140%. To reduce free radicals and peroxynitrite. Today's blood mix is pure perfluorocarbon with new modified monocytes. New kidneys functioning well. Donor pig sacrificed. Brined. Prepared as seared pork chops. Author's note. Sus Vida is for prissy nerds. Poor Whitford. I wonder if I should reduce the volume of my stem cells introduced into the big blastocytes. I feel too much empathy for them. Does PFHOR compel me to take better care of Clovis pig chimeras than ordinary porkers? Yes, but only to the extent that they can contribute to my legacy with cloned organs and good eating. No guilt. Note, savaging. The term for parents destroying their own offspring is savaging. It was a problem for pig farmers in the days when we raised livestock. Sows attacked their own piglets. No one has ever worked out a good explanation. One theory is that the mother pigs are frightened by their young, terrified by these strange, noisy, needy things. Author's note, evolution is not a perfect optimizer. A trait like fear of our own offspring could endure if piglet mortality is already high. The ancient biologist August Weissman believes we aged to make room for the next generation that we are programmed to die, to leave a space for our offspring. Perhaps the sows simply acted in self-defense. Note, Europa life. Now a bristling thing, large as a whale, appears on the ice-borne camera we dropped into the ocean below. A dandelion made of soft arms. Bright red and yellow markings indicate it evolved in the shallows, where some light pierces the ice. The limbs wave slowly to and fro, a motion that is both, a motion that is both hunting and breathing. Prey approaches, drawn by the plankton that cake on the drifter's skin. With vegetable slowness, its limbs embrace the victim, sting it, and pull it into an open central stomach, where thready parasites wait to infest and digest. Everything it does is slow and intestinal, pulsatory, brainless. Sometimes the limbs bicker, two are dead, fuzzy with rot. They have strangled each other. It is a colony organism. If threatened, it will discorporate. The limbs will spasm. The core will tear itself apart in a puff of fluids. And all those arms will slither away into the dark beneath the ice. Fat worms of terror searching for a hide. The digestive parasites will be expelled as a decoy left to squirm in panic. I despise it. I would have it killed, except that I am repulsed by the thought of its final disintegration. I consider how to burn it. Entry 3. I died. What a nuisance. Corporeal status. Body at 13.7 C. Pulse. 3 beats per minute. Weak. Irregular. 
Blood pressure, not detectable. Pulse, oxygen, 600%. Emergency, anti-ischemic oxygen flood. Cryonic perfusion, metabolic waste scavengers active. Clinical death duration, 11 hours. Successful emergency hypothermic arrest. Reactive oxygen spike. Tamped, interleukin blocked. Redox, blocked. Ischemic reperfusion, injury fully averted. PPAIs unregulated. Squirrel lipid switch engaged. Prognosis, good. Drop dead of dysautonomia while rummaging for leftover pork chop. I am now in recovery in a medical smile pod. I have no breath and no pulse. It is the return of oxygen to dead tissue that does most of the damage. I should be asleep, but I have yet to get this down quickly. While I was dead, I had a dream. I was in a working exobody, everything so vivid, no need for waxy eardrums or jelly eyeballs. Like seeing for the first time after a life of cataracts. I think I was immortal. The only unpleasant aspect of the experience was my amnesia. I couldn't recall my own name. I saw someone walking past me. I think it must have been Anastasia. And not only did I fail to recognize her, but it never even occurred to me that I should. When I awoke, I thought I must have had a near-death vision. So I checked my nerve locks. Every last spark in my brain is recorded, and nothing in that cerebral panic can account for my dream. The mind is the brain. It is impossible to have a vision without correlated neural activity. Yet I did. Wonderful. This is why I came here. Unmapped secrets. Impossible dreams. A chance to pass beyond the infinite and escape the tyranny of causal closure. I wholeheartedly believe that the dream was a message from clarity, a promise of success. I struggle to explain what I will become. The Luca. I borrowed that term from biology. In the same way I consider Braytech my extended phenotype, and its discoveries my mimetic grandchildren. When we depart the cradle of the solar system to begin our colonization of the galaxy, the dominant ideology of our time, the core logic we use to organize and plan our relationship with the cosmos will be scattered to become the Luca, the last universal common ancestor of all future human growth. The Luca is the most recent common ancestor of all living things. For Earth life, it is a single cell that lived in the deep ocean billions of years ago, flourishing in the warmth of magma or sulfur vents. It was not the first life on Earth, but it was the only life whose descendants survived to the present. All its contemporaries have been extinguished by the passage of the epochs. I plan to be the Luca of all future human thought. Author's note. Now I remember Luca Brasi, the Corleone family heavy. Newipedia says that Brasi murdered his own infant child. Why? Why would he do such a thing? The article doesn't explain. Savaging again. Note. Clarity. Study of the lunar artifact retrieved from the K-1 mission provides insight into the effect that I have termed clarity. Clarity violates established symmetries and conservation laws. In doing so, it defies Nether's theorem, the most fundamental and beautiful cornerstones of physics. Symmetry and conservation are two sides of the same coin. All things are transformations of one thing, without gain or loss. As my childhood tutor put it, if A can become B, then B can become A. We say that state B, say, a mixed drink, comes after state A, say, sugar and water, only because there are more probable pathways from A to B. Wait long enough, longer than the universe, and your drink really can return to state A, spontaneously unmixing itself. But clarity is not always symmetrical. For example, it violates time reversibility. Consider the simple equation, clarity A to B. This is the application of clarity to state A to produce a lower entropy state B. Clarity is fond of removing portions of state configuration, harrowing the phase space down to only its most robust inhabitants. Time symmetry suggests that we should be able to run this process in reverse and retrieve the original. Reverse clarity B to A. 
but in fact we obtain reverse clarity B to C, where C is the same as in clarity B to C. Clarity's effects cannot be used to return a transformed state to its original state. Instead, we obtain a second transformed state, further yet from the original configuration. Author's note. What does this actually mean in common language? Invoking the Lashmit paradox is certainly not common language. Ah, perhaps an allusion to... I believe that clarity may be akin to the mythical universal solvent, the alkahest, the azoth, which ancient alchemists believed had the power to dissolve anything into its pure base elements. Ingested properly, the alkahest could purify the body and grant eternal life. Nonsense in poetry? Perhaps. But let me ask you this. Why do we exist? We exist because the universe began in a state of lower entropy and has ever since expanded and unwound, transforming from a single dense plasma into a void filled with complex structures. In the future, it will achieve maximum entropy when all organized matter has collapsed into black holes and these holes evaporate into the uniformity of heat death. I wonder what clarity would do to a black hole. This is the unexplained secret of creation. How did that original low entropy state come to be? In the first place, and the first time, the egg of history. What if clarity was responsible? What if there was some primeval chaos, some pre-cosmic entropy, which was soaked into clarity to reduce it to that first nucleus of all existence, which issued the Big Bang? What if clarity's defiance of time reversibility makes it a fountain of cosmic youth, returning all that is burnt out and burnt down to its state before the fire? Perhaps clarity is the Ein Sof, the nameless god before creation, preparator of the cosmic egg, razor that cuts the fat of complication away from the bone. Those who comprehend the alkahest, it is said, will obtain eternal life. Message to Bray, Wilhelmina. Encrypt, Peaky, Clovis Root, QD Resist, Shore, RNG, C, AM 241, Pad, Pad Willa. Warning, this transmission will expend entangled qubits for security. Wilhelmina, it's your grandfather. I'm on Europa doing some very exciting work. I understand that you're probably reluctant to enter into any collaboration given my choices surrounding your father's treatment, but I sincerely believe that this will be the most important scientific project since the invention of agriculture. You know how I value minds that can run alongside mine. I fondly remember your childhood explanation of the myth of the Alpha Wolf, the truth you told me was that the so-called Alpha is not a dominant male, but simply the father of the family. I remember with less fondness, but with equal respect, your later accusation that I had so fully assumed the role of immortal patriarch as to close myself off from you. Megalos Krios Pateras, you called me, in very poor Greek. On the day of my son's funeral, let me show you what I was thinking of when I was not thinking of my family. Come to Europa. Help me. Save draft. Consent. Message to Bray. Anastasia. Encrypt. Peaky. Clovis Root. QD. Resist. Shore. RNGC. AM. 241. Pat. Padana. Warning. This transmission will extend entangled qubits for security. Anastasia, it's your grandfather. I'm on Europa doing some very exciting work. I understand that you're probably reluctant to enter into any collaboration given your memory of your father's treatment process. I also know that you've struggled with the questions of belonging, not helped by my own attitude towards your genetics. Let me make amends. You've wasted enough on that paranoic machine. Both of us know that your attempts to fix the value capture problem are just bandages on an ethical wound. Come to Europa. Let's set aside the broken past and make a clean start. What I have here will change everything. We will be as immortal as your war mind, and far more human. Safe draft, unsent. Message to Bray, Elizabeth. Encrypt, P key, Clovis root. QD resist, short, RNG seed, AM 241, pad, pad LC. Warning, this transmission will expend entangled qubits for security. Come to Europa. 
I'm taking an enormous risk, and this time I am the one at risk. Let me prove to you that I did nothing to your father that I wouldn't do to myself. There are significant dangers, outside context threats. Your expertise would be invaluable. I need you. Send. Entry 4. I found her! Clarity control. The mystery I was promised. Analysis of the surrounding ice suggests it arrived on Europa no more than 20 years ago. Still, well before I encountered the K-1 artifact. How long have they planned my invitation? Arrival event. Omnibus analysis of spallation products. In the ice suggest recent X-ray bombardment. Characteristic of the decay of the Majorana massive light sterile neutrino. These neutrinos are associated with the Lambda field and the expansion of the early universe. So a blast of dark neutrinos struck this particular province of the European chaos. The particle involved, a yet more evidence that clarity is as old as time, the alkahest that shaped the early universe. I wonder why clarity control chose the particular aspect it did, that form, that face, the same visage as the precursor on Earth's moon. What is it meant to communicate? Is it a message particularly meant for me? I have always harbored a wariness towards women. I understand people as coiled engines of self-interest, programmed first by a cosmology that selects via the anthropic principle for the possibility of a complex structure, then by a biology that wipes out trace deleterious to its own persistence, and then by a culture that evolves to promote the survival of its hosts. People are avatars of these self-preserving forces. I feel a purity and a rightness to this understanding. It lets me see people as they really are. It is the foundation of PFHOR. But all of this is complicated in women. They are the sites of such evolutionary complexity, the grandmother hypothesis, for example, or the eusociality of female ants. Even their flesh is hard to understand. Female bodies are a mosaic of two cell lines, one with the mother's X chromosome active, one with the father's, never both. A house of two lineages, constantly renegotiating their mutual interests. It's that interior plurality, the secret death, why Elizabeth, Wilhelmina, and an Anastasia were all so vehemently opposed to my plan for Clovis II's treatment. Alton never fought it. But the girls were persistently difficult. Elizabeth has not responded to my message. I know she received it. I will have to remind her of her own self-interest. Note: Why exomines fail. The major obstacle to a bio exomind is the loop billboard crash cycle. Human consciousness in a simula is not new. The equipment we provided AeroChina for containment of the K-1 anomaly included simulated connectome forks of the mission crew as mineshaft canaries. But the simulated environments are limited. If a simulated crew member wants to leave the mission and go home, they cannot. And that impossibility will cause divergence from the physical original. Even minute changes in the physical fidelity of the simulation can have chaotic effects. All cognition is embodied. The architecture of our minds is highly co-evolved with our physical form. In or out of simulation, only a true synthetic AI can dissociate from the human body plan. Author's note, and there be dragons. Without common evolutionary legacy, there is no reason an AI should share our values. Given the limits of simulation, we need to find synthetic immortality in the real world. The grail of Homo simulacra is an artificial body with an immortal human mind. Attempts to upload human minds into frames with their artificial senses and limited architecture are uniformly terrifying and disagreeable. Early attempts at uploaded consciousness were haunted by fears that the upload would suffer cryptic loss of qualia, the unseen death of the first person conscious mind. The upload would then become a so-called billboard, a flat imitation. I lobbied the ISO to establish a standard for a certified conscious simulacrum. Any emulation of a human brain must display neural activity correlated with consciousness, particularly in the nuclei of the thalamus, midbrain, and pons. 
modern philosophy is satisfied that all qualia have neural correlates. Many researchers refer to this criterion as the zombie detector. The problem with exomines is that they quickly stop passing the zombie test. The first stage of the breakdown is looping, the same repetitive stereotyped behavior once observed in zoo animals. Prototype exomines begin to repeat similar conversations and action schemes. This stereotypy descends from high-level social behaviors through cognitive programs like memory recall and task selection into basic motor functions. The mid-stage symptoms are pacing, chewing, rocking, grunting, striking limbs against walls or furniture, and facial tics. This is a result of depressed activity in the higher brain. Without input from the prefrontal cortex, the basal ganglia stops selecting new motor programs. The eventual, highly upsetting result is the atheosis, a disorder characterized by slow, involuntary writhing motions of the limbs, digits, neck, and tongue. Early exobodies, without governors on their paramuscle, could tear themselves apart like starfish with wasting syndrome. This was how my son died. Author's note. I am reminded of that hideous European thing. Why does my brain insist on free associating its way back to its self-destruction? And again, I return to savaging the young. The driver of this degenerative loop is a process we call billboarding. No matter how actively we stimulate the exobody, how rich we make its social and cognitive environment, and how powerful its senses, we still observe the gradual shutdown of exoneurons. The neural correlates of the consciousness in the midbrain are among the first to die. The exomind, despite acing the Turing test, no longer meets ISO standards for consciousness. It is a philosophical zombie. Author's note. I have had the uncanny experience of holding a long, emotional conversation with an uploaded woman, only to discover that she was unconscious the entire time, and in fact showed brain activity similar to deep asphyxia. The languid, ambiguous phrases that I found so intriguing were the result of a brain that had lost its neocortex. She was dead. Eventually, this shutdown proceeds far enough that the exomine cannot sustain its default network, the light in the windows of a living brain. We roll the brain state back and try again, but the outcome is inevitable. Why does this self-strangulation occur? At first, I believed the answer was simple. Like a tiger pacing in a zoo pen, the exomind did not receive enough stimulation from the exobody. A human and sensory deprivation will go mad. Perhaps the exobody deprived the mind of some vital but unrecognized sense. But now, I think I was on the wrong track. The problem is actually one of excessive self-causation. If, as the philosopher Wick proposed, we are that which we cause the most, and our future selves qualify as still truly us only because they are primarily determined by our current brain state, then a paradox arises. To remain ourselves, we must limit the amount of change we experience. For example, our brain cannot be changed into a cloud of hot gas without killing us. But what change is permissible? Would we not be most ourselves if we never changed? if our future state was fully determined by our current state. I believe the human mind is engaged in constant self-correction in order to filter out external causation that might disrupt our self-loops. The mind screens out errors caused by cosmic rays, EM fields, prions, chemical misfires, irritating conversations, etc. by running a kind of constant checksum on itself. Perhaps this recursive self-checking is even the source of consciousness itself. Exominds, however, are immune to these natural sources of error. They are not messy enough. They do not suffer enough jitter, enough degradation. When we train AIs, we knock out random neurons in the learning cycle, forcing the AI to operate without them. This creates a more robust, stable intelligence. It also shows why some random error and entropy is vital to keeping a brain alive. Without those random knockouts, the AI is vulnerable to overfitting, locking itself into a single, narrow-stereotyped behavior. 
perfectly adapted to a very specific set of stimuli, but otherwise catatonic and unresponsive. Without countervailing entropy, the very self-corrective process is meant to maintain the human mind, calcify, and kill it. I believe this is why exomines fail. If the exomines are to be viable shelters against mortality, I must find a useful source of noise. Emulation of biological error will not be enough. The exomind is designed for total immunity to such fleshy noise, after all. That source of error must be clarity. The effect generated by clarity control. But how can it be gathered, harvested, and applied? How can I change clarity from an abstract process to something tangible, incarnate, and usable? I know that it is possible. It is the reason I was brought here. Message to Bray, Elizabeth. Encrypt, P key, Clovis root, QD resist, Shoa, RNG seed, AM 241, Pat, Pat Elsie. Warning, this transmission will expand entangled qubits for security. I know your secret. Did you think you could keep it from me? Elizabeth, I keep track of every tiny change in your gene expression. I know when you so much as burp. You are my offspring. You are the most important thing in the universe to me, for you are an extension of my own self. I understand you're angry with me. I would be too if I'd watch my father come so close to salvation, only to die the way he did. Believe me, the groans and snaps of his exobody tearing itself apart haunt me almost as profoundly as the things we said over his deathbed. I failed your father. First, I tried to make him sleepless. When that failed augment eventually turned against him, I correctly identified the disease as fatal prion insomnia, while those incompetents were still blathering about the unexplained cachexia. I even recognized that my boy's hypervigilant immune system would make gene therapy and polythiophene treatment ineffective. At every step, I was ahead of the problem, and entirely focused on its solution. I determined to transfer him to a new body, and I failed. The new body killed him. His final scan still sleeps in the family archives, awaiting, perhaps, some second change. But what I am working on here could have saved him, could save him still, and it can save you. You know that you have your father's disease, inherited from the same genes I so rashly engineered. You have the Clovis curse. There is no way to know exactly when it will strike, but once it does, I'm sure you have charted out exactly how it will progress. First, insomnia, panic, hallucination, and fear, extended hypnagogia, and the loss of all dreams. You will sweat and your eyes will dwindle to points. You will go into menopause. You will try anti-prion treatments and gene therapy to correct the mutation, but your enhanced immunity will protect the very flaw that is killing you. You will try immunosuppressants, but they will be no match for the family arsenal. I did not make us to be easily edited. Within two years, you will be entirely unable to sleep. Dementia and wasting will follow. You will be dead by then, but the husk you leave behind will continue to live, sustained by machines, unable even to dream of a time when it was Elizabeth Bray. Come to me. I am dying too. Let us save each other. Thank you.